Hey everyone, and welcome to the Anime Impressions Winter 2015 Anime Season Preview. We're going to go ahead and jump right into things here, and we're going to talk about the shows that have brand new seasons coming up. So these are shows that were on before, and they're coming back for new seasons now. So we've got Aldo Zero, Death Parade, which is the sequel to Death Billiards, Dog Days, Dorarara, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I believe this is the Egypt arc, Kamisama Kiss, Kuroko's Basketball, Shonen Hollywood, Sokyo no Fafner, or Sokyo, sorry, Tante Opera Milky Holmes, Idol Master, and Tokyo Ghoul. So all these shows are returning for new seasons uh, starting in January. And uh, next up, we have some notable shows that are continuing from the fall into the winter. So uh, shows that started or, you know, are continuing uh, that I think are, are worth noting. So we've got Parasite, Log Horizon, Seven Deadly Sins, Your Lie in April, Shirobako, and World Trigger. Now, there are other shows. These are just the ones that I think are, are pretty notable. So... With that out of the way, we're going to move on and talk about the brand new shows that are coming out this season. And this is mainly what I cover at Anime Impressions. And so I'm going to do my best to give you guys an idea of each show and express some opinions on it uh, as we move forward into the new season. So the first show we've got up is Absolute Duo. And uh, so you're going to get this with every show. Um, just a nice uh, little title slide. And then we're going to move on talk about the plot. So... In Absolute Duo, people can use Blaze, which is the manifestation of their soul as a weapon. And the main character, instead of a weapon, he has a shield. And he's also enrolled in a school, and the school partners up students together, and he gets paired up with a beautiful girl. Uh, so this is an action-etchy, harem, school romance, supernatural show. And uh, the main studio working on it is 8-Bit, who has done uh, shows like Fruit of Grizzia, Tokyo Ravens, Encouragement of Climb. And uh, so, what's the bottom line? To me, this looks like a typical harem anime where the main character gets some weird, special version of, uh, you know, powers that other people have. But this makes him uniquely powerful, and it makes all the girls fall in love with him. So... A general opinion is, meh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too excited about this one. So, this is the format that this uh, preview is gonna go in. So, uh, you're gonna get what we just saw for each show. So, we're gonna continue and move on to show number two, Assassination Classroom. Now, Assassination Classroom is about a group of students that have to assassinate their teacher before they graduate. But the catch is their teacher is a tentacled monster who can reach like Mach 20 and he's already destroyed the moon and he says, you know, I'm going to destroy the earth if someone can't kill me within a year. So they have to kill their teacher before they graduate. It's an action comedy school shown in Supernatural. The main studio is Brains Base, who's worked on Natsumi Yujin Cho, uh, my teen romantic comedy snafu, One Week Friends. Uh, so some good shows. And the bottom line is uh, it's an interesting plot premise with a solid studio, so I've got high hopes for it. I'm expecting quite a lot of comedy and action because the characters look very interesting and, and unique, so I'm saying this show is looking pretty awesome. Moving on, we've got Handsome High School Earth Defense Club Love. Pay attention to this picture and that little pink thing down there. Uh... So in this one, five students that are in a club, like the Do Nothing Club, get involved in a battle against the student council to gain the throne of battle lovers, or something like that. And uh, this is all instigated by two alien creatures, uh, essentially. Um, there were no specific genres listed, so if I've got the asterisk there, it's because it wasn't specifically listed. This is my best guess at the genre. But it looks like it's going to be a school comedy supernatural. It's being done by Studio Diomedia, who has worked on Sola, Akuma no Riddle, and Squid Girl, among others. And the bottom line is Pretty Boys Fight for the Throne of Battle Lovers uh, at the behest of the pink koala bear looking alien. And it sounds weird, but not necessarily my kind of weird, so eh, I'm not really looking forward to this one. Next up, we've got Isuka. 
In Isaka, a boy gets a job working for a girl who's part of this family that exercises monsters and demons and captures them and stuff like that. And he, while he's working there, he accidentally lets one out. And him and the girl team up to go recapture it. And then from there, they kind of have their little monster catching team. And it, you know, follows what they do as a monster catching team. This one's an action etchy comedy school romance supernatural. Studio is Arms, who's done Elfin Lead, Icky Towson, and Brynhildr in the Darkness. The bottom line is I'm not super thrilled about uh, that studio. Those shows aren't super impressive to me, and the plot doesn't sound very original. But it doesn't sound terrible, and the artwork looks okay. So I'm kind of on the fence as to whether this is going to be good, bad. You know, it's really going to depend. Um on on how they portray everything so I'm pretty neutral on this one next up we've got Maria the Virgin Witch now in this one Maria is a witch who hates violence and she lives during the hundred year war in France and she uses her magic to interrupt battles and stop fights and things like that and this kind of I guess makes heaven angry so the Archangel Michael makes a decree that when Maria loses her virginity, she's also going to lose her magic. And then there's some other stuff with, uh, I guess, an angel trying to like maybe seduce her or something. I'm not entirely sure, but that's the main plot. It's an action fantasy romance, and it's being done by Projection IG, which I'm sure you've heard of. Uh, they've done Haikyuu, Ghost in the Shell, East of Eden, all kinds of stuff. And the bottom line is uh, I'm pretty interested in the plot, not because of the virginity, but we're talking about witches, the Hundred Year War in France, archangels. I'm like, where did this mix of things come from? I really want to know what's going on. And also, Production IG just d does amazing work with their shows, and the artwork in the PV uh, video is looking awesome. So that's, that's where this show is at for me. It's at awesome. Next, we've got Unlimited Fafnir School Battle. And in this one, dragons show up on Earth, and then shortly after, girls are born, or girls known as D, are born with dragon powers. And the main character is the first boy to ever have dragon powers. It's a school fantasy romance, once again being done by Studio Diamondia. And the bottom line is it sounds terrible and sounds like a plot that's been done over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, whether this show is good or not is just, it's going to be entirely based on whether the characters are interesting and whether, you know, the, the dragon power action sequences are good or not. I'm really apathetic about this show, uh, but I'll check it out anyway, you know, just to see if maybe it'll surprise me. Next up, we've got Can Call, also known as uh, the Kantai Collection Can Call. And uh, this one is based on a video game where you control ship girls that are called Kanmuso. And the show, I believe, is about the Kanmuso themselves and going to like the Naval Academy or, or whatever school they go to to train to fight against a fleet of alien warships. So, a little bit strange. It's an action military school, slice of life looking kind of show. It's being done by Studio Diamondia again. And the bottom line is that Ship Girls seems like a really weird thing. I don't know. They've, what is it? Strike Witches kind of has like uh, the, the hybrid person machine or maybe um, Gunslinger Girls or something like that. So this is like girls combined with ships. But the production values look good in the PV, the character designs are nice, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty entertaining school slice of life show. The PV didn't really show any like action sequences or anything like that, so I'm not sure if that's going to be a large element of the show or not, but it did look very like just kind of girl school slice of lifey, but you know, I think it looks pretty promising. Next up we've got Kofuku Graffiti. And uh, this one is about a girl named Ryo, <laughs> Ryo, Ryo, a girl named Ryo, who is a middle school student who makes her friends through her cooking. She's like a really good cook, and uh, it's based on a manga that's full of detailed cuisine art and erotic meal scenes, is what it says. 
don't really know too much beyond that, um, you know, without digging into the manga, which uh, I'm not going to do. Uh, but it is a comedy slice of life. It's being done by Studio Shaft, who worked on Bakemonogatari, Madoka Magica, and Nisekoi. And the bottom line is, come on, cooking, food, comedy. I don't know what erotic meal scenes are, but I can't pretend that I don't want them. Like, because I do. I do. They might be awkward, but I don't... Food, cooking, you know... It looks like a promising show to me. Um, you know, I, I'm really into cooking and stuff myself, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Next up, we've got Rolling Girls. And uh, this one <clears throat> doesn't really have a clear description out there on the, of the web. They just have like a tagline uh, that doesn't really tell you anything about the show. But it looks like it uh, probably involves fighting mopeds, girls, maybe even rolling or rolling girls. Uh, it looks like maybe it has like a school versus school or gang versus gang fight dynamic to it. I'm not 100% sure, but that's that's what it looked like to me. And this is an action comedy shown in school, Supernatural, just based on the PV. Those aren't official genres. That's what I kind of thought, you know, maybe they would be. And the studio working on it is Wit Studio, and this is the studio that did a Attack on Titan. So it's not the same author or anything, just the same stu uh, studio that did Attack on Titan. They also did uh, Hozuki no Re Retetsu, uh, which was the show about um, the management of hell, basically. And they also did How the Movie. They don't have a whole lot of shows under the belt. I think uh, this is actually an original anime that they are doing. Um, so the bottom line is that I didn't know what to think until I saw the PV. I, I thought it was pretty cool. The art looked cool, but the PV just took it to a whole new level. Uh, it showed a girl in a gas mask. It showed a girl who was fighting people with a giant safety pin. It showed dudes in weird outfits, explosions. It had an animation style that kind of reminded me of uh, Gainax's Gunbuster uh, OVAs and stuff like that. Uh, and it looks pretty awesome. I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. So next we've got How to Raise a Boring Girlfriend. And uh, this one is about an otaku named Tomoyo Aki. And one day he's, you know, on his way to work or way back from work or something like that. And he bumps into this girl and he's like, man, this is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. And then he finds out that she's his classmate who's like super boring, super plain, super normal, and he's just blown away. He's like, I have to turn this girl into the perfect girl. So he enlists the aid of some other girls to help turn this girl into the girl of his dreams to turn her into, I don't know, the ideal dating sim girl or anime girl. I'm not really sure, but that's the premise is he sees this beautiful girl who's super boring and he's like, I got to do something to make her interesting. And this is a uh, comedy slice of life school romance being done by A1 Pictures, who worked on Fairy Tale, Silver Spoon, and Blue Exorcist. And the bottom line is they've got a lot of good titles under their belt. A1 Pictures does, and uh, so I mean that's a that's a point in favor of this show. And uh, the plot sounds like it's a pretty fun romp through an abnormal situation, which is generally what I find anime to be pretty good for. And so I'm expecting a lot. I think it's pretty promising, um, you know, just, just based on those factors. Next up, we've got Seiken Sukai no World Break. And this one has a world where youths known as saviors have memories from past lives, which kind of reminds me of uh, Nobunagun, where, you know, like they channel the powers of ancient or, you know, historical figures, but they've got memories from past lives, and there are two kinds of saviors. There are Shirogani, who fight with weapons, and there are Kuroma, who fight with magic. And the main character is the first person able to do or be both of those. He has, like, two past lives, so he can fight with weapons and magic. And this is an action fantasy. It's being done by uh, Dio Medea. And the bottom line is... 
along with Absolute Duo and Unlimited Fafner School Battle. Like, this one falls into my top three least interesting plot ideas for this season. Like, come on. Okay, we get it. This dude has powers that are better than everybody else who has similar powers, and he's... That makes him good at school, and that makes him get all the ladies, and I don't care. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. You know, maybe it has cool action scenes. I don't know. The character designs, I, I don't like them. But, uh, like I said, we'll see. Next up, before I even say the title, I gotta apologize for this picture. Uh, I really couldn't find a better picture uh, with the dimensions that I needed. Uh, and this is not really appropriate for the show. So, Sengoku Muso is based uh, on the video game series that follows or lets you play as samurai in feudal Japan. So, this right here, all cowboy looking stuff, not the greatest depiction. This is a show about samurais, it's an action historical samurai show. It's being done by Tezuka Productions, who did Kids on the Slope. Astro Boy, the uh, 2003 release, I believe, and uh, Blackjack. And the bottom line is, I don't really know what to think about this one. There's not a whole lot of like clips out there. There's not a plot. Uh, in general, I don't really like feudal Japan settings and samurais and stuff like that. Um, it's like, the, I don't know. They, they all just seem to be very similar. Uh, but, you know, without a a video to go on or a plot or something it's really hard for me to make a determination one way or the other although I did think that the art looked pretty good just based on some pictures so right now I'm pretty neutral on this one next up we've got the testament of sister new devil and uh, this one is about a main character who gets two new stepsisters when his dad remarries and it turns out that his stepsisters are actually a demon, a newbie demon lord and a succubus. And in the process of one of them trying to make a contract with them, something goes wrong and he becomes the master of them instead of the other way around. And then there's some stuff about battles between hero and demon tribes and things like that. This is an action etchy fantasy shonen romance being done by production IMS who did Inari Kong Kong and Gonna Be the Twin Tails. And the bottom line here is, uh, this show was runner-up. It was number four. If there was a top four uh, worst plot ideas, uh, this would be number four. Uh, it doesn't sound particularly interesting to me, and the fact that this show is the third show that the studio has worked on, and that one of their other shows was gonna be The Twin Tales... Just, that's just bad. It's just, it's just bad for, for me. Like, gonna be the Twin Tails? Like, I... First, I was amazed at how, like, good the animation quality was, but then I was like, who makes a show like this? I don't know. I just didn't get it. So, not really uh, getting my hopes up for this one based off of those things. Next up, we've got Yoru no Yatterman. And, uh... This one, I wasn't too sure if I should count it as a brand new uh, series or not. I believe it is. But it's uh, there's a gang of thieves known as Doranbo who pursue the Skull Stone, which is a stone that leads to like the largest gold deposit in all of the land. And it's up to the Yattermen, who are like these heroes, to stop them from getting their hands on it. And this is actually uh, a prequel to... The Yatterman series that came out several years ago uh, and kind of tells how the characters in that series came to be. It's a comedy sci-fi from what I can tell. And I apologize for the error here um, with the studio. But uh, it's being done by Tatsunoku Productions, who, if you can't read there, says uh, they did Casher and Sins, Ping Pong the Animation, and Sket Dance. And the bottom line here is uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one in the hopes that it'll be entertaining. I don't know much about it. I know that Yatterman has always kind of like piqued my interest. It, it's like one of those names in the back of my head that's like you should watch that sometime. And I don't even know why. Um, so I'm really not sure if it's a, like a kid's show, if it's action-packed, uh, full of violence. It's probably not full of violence. But, you know, I, 
I don't know what to expect from it, so right now I'm pretty neutral uh, about it. And then finally, the last show is Yuri Kuma no Arashi. And uh, this show is about a girl named Kureha, who is an ordinary girl who's barely noticed at school. She's practically invisible. And almost every night she has a dream where her mysterious classmate appears as a bear. And there's also like storms going on and stuff like that. I was watching the PV and like I think I saw one of the girls like pull like a rifle out of her locker. Um, so it looks like a supernatural school uh, type of show. It's being done by Silverlink who did Kokoro Connect, Strike the Blood, and also uh, Prisma Ilya from the, the Fate series. And the bottom line on this one is, I don't really know. It's a really vague description uh, for the show. The art looks kind of interesting. I'm not sure about the character faces. They kind of bother me a little bit, but everything else looks pretty good. And the plot just sounds really strange. And uh, unlike the previous show, this is kind of weird that I'm, you know, I, I might enjoy. So I'm hoping it turns out good, but you know, who really knows? So uh, I'm pretty neutral about that one as well. So that brings us to my top five picks for brand new shows of the uh, winter 2015 season. And these are kind of in order. Um, I didn't put too much thought into putting them in this order. but uh, So in at number five is Kofuku Graffiti because cooking, food, comedy, right? Number four is How to Raise a Boring Girlfriend because I'm just... I think the studio's good. Looks like it's going to be a good comedy slice of life. Uh, I think I'm probably going to enjoy it. And at number three is Rolling Girls, simply because that PV impressed me so much with the action and just craziness. It looks really good. Number two is Assassination Classroom. Great plot idea. Uh, the characters look interesting. There's a huge cast of characters. And uh, I don't know too much about it, but I don't know. Assassination, monsters... That sounds good to me. And in at number one is Mario the Virgin Witch because production IG, because the artwork looks pretty good, because the plot sounds interesting, and I still don't understand how you get that mix of witches, you know, um, archangels, and the Hundred Years' War in France. So these are my top five picks. You know, they could be totally wrong. Uh, I go into the seasons a lot of times, you know, thinking that this show's going to be good, this one's going to be bad. And I'm pretty good at, uh, at gauging those things, but occasionally there's, you know, some that throw me for a loop one way or the other. I thought it was going to be really good and it was terrible, or vice versa. Uh, but generally, I'm pretty spot on with what I'm going to like the most. So these are my top five. And that is the end of the preview, so if you like this preview, please keep an eye on my site during the upcoming season for anime reviews and impressions. I don't care if you subscribe, like, do all that YouTube crap. Just watch uh, my site uh, if you're interested in getting some more reviews and opinions from me. If you like my thoughts in this preview, you'll get more of that at my website, which is animeimpressions.wordpress.com. So thank you for tuning in. And I will see you in another video for uh, the spring preview when that comes up if I don't see you in a video before then. Thank you.